cylindrical tank of constant height h as shown to the is shown as shown to the right is filled with water okay assuming there is a hole in the tank the distance of the water flowing out of the hole is given as a function of x okay the distance from the top of the water column okay here's an equation where should the hole be in terms of x to maximize the range of the water ah what's well, nice that we don't have to rewrite h in terms of x so basically we're going to take this equation ignore everything set up here take the derivative set it equal to zero and just optimize like we always do and we'll kind of see where this goes so start by rewriting r of x in a location that's slightly more convenient for me to I'll do whoop I'm gonna call this h x minus x squared to the one-half it might be easier if I just distribute those and then rewrite the square root as a um, as an exponential power as opposed to the square root symbol so r prime of x equals so we'll do 2 times 1 half times hx minus x squared to the negative 1 half times the derivative of the interior, which will be h minus 2x. Yep. So then the 1 half and the 2 will cancel out, and we're left with h minus 2x over hx minus x squared to the 1 half. I'll set that equal to 0. Make it a little implied. So we have multiplying both sides by the bottom. This will just disappear. And so we'll be left with h equals 2x. Therefore, x will equal h over 2. Okay, and so looking at this kind of the way we have before, we can look at values of x, values of h. Oh, that is way crooked. I know that's not making things much better. Eh, maybe it will. Okay, I'm fine with that. And so we have h over two. We have a maximum height of x equals zero, which basically means that h and it's at the top, or h is at the very bottom. And what should they? So we have two things playing off each other. We have the water pressure up here. So the lower the hole, the greater the water pressure is going to be, and so the more velocity that water is going to shoot out of. But then we have basically height down here so that um, it'll be further that it'll be able to shoot before it hits the ground. So zero won't make any sense because there is zero water pressure. And if we look at it up here, we'd have two times zero times h, which would be two times square root of zero, which would be zero. So this will be zero. If we plug in x equals h, then we have h minus h here, which would also be 0, which kind of makes sense. And so it makes sense that our maximum distance would be h over 2. So we have 2 times h over 2 times h minus h over 2 square rooted, which is, this becomes h over 2. We have h squared over 4. 2 times square root of h squared over 4, which equals 2 over 2 times h. So we have a maximum distance of h. Interesting. But they're asking for the... So h is greater than 0 and h. Um, this would be 0 when we plug in h over 2 for the derivative. And so the way that we'd optimize this then would be at x equals h over 2 halfway between um, 
the top and the bottom of the water column. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. To backtrack slightly, recap. So they're given they're giving us this physical phenomenon, and they give us an equation. We can basically ignore the physical phenomenon, but eh, it's kind of nice to have it in the back of your head just to kind of make sure things kind of make sense. We are told to maximize this equation, which we do by taking the derivative of it. Take the derivative, um, set equal to zero, and that gives us a critical point. A critical point is where we can have a maximum or a minimum. And from there then we test the critical point and then the end points to see where our um, maximum will be. And it'll be one of those, I guess in this case, three points, because we only had one critical point. So we had two endpoints and a critical point, test them all, and whichever one of those values gives us the highest value will be our maximum. In this case, it's at x equals h over 2. And that's how we solve this optimization of pressure and height problem.